Amen. Amen. I'm sorry, last week, but hey, it's still a new year. Yes. Right? And man, it is off to an incredible and even miraculous start, saints of God. Mm -hmm. I hope you are watching this week. God is moving on Monday night football. I was watching the game, Cincinnati Bengals. I love that new young hot. Oh, we got some young hot shot quarterbacks in the NFL. We Joe do. Burrow's yeah. his name. Some of the ladies are saying, why are we talking about football? Because it's fun. <laughs> and um, and it's, uh, it's an analogy of the Christian life. Amen? Amen? We're on one team, and the devil and his minions are on the other team. Right? <laughs> Jesus is our quarterback, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're trying to catch that ball and run with it. Amen? Amen? Mm -hmm. And sometimes you got to push the people out of the way to get to your goal. Yeah. Yeah. The opposition. Mm -hmm. Right? Anyway. Um. And, uh, and, and playing the Buffalo Bills and first quarter watching the game and everybody I'm sure has heard and a young 24 year old Christian by the way young man on the defense makes a tackle and we don't know if, if the COVID vaccine had anything to do with it or not yet we don't know yet but he took a hit to the chest with the helmet he stood up, clapped his hands and immediately died died Cardiac arrest, fell over backwards on the field, 24 years old. And immediately everybody knew this was bad. This wasn't, you know, there's been bad injuries, right? Bones sticking out and stuff, you know. They bring out the car, the game continues, you know. And uh, not this time, not this time. And suddenly, America was a Christian nation again. Within a minute, America was praying. Yes. Both teams on the field were praying. Yes. The announcers on ABC. Yes. You know what ABC stands for? All but communists. Yes. They were they were saying we're, we're praying right now. Our thoughts and prayers. Yes. It was being covered by ESPN. What ESPN is the probably one of the most liberal channels yes. out there. One of the announcers said, I've got to pray. And right on national TV, pray for DeMar Hamlin is his name. For DeMar Hamlin to be healed. Yes. Yes. Not, oh dear Lord. You know, like, Lord, you are able. Yes. You're God. Yes. Giver of life, creator of the universe. Heal him. <coughs> we got prayer. <coughs> Everybody they're talking to, the whole, it's just the game stop. No, there, there was no going to be they weren't going to restart that game. All of a sudden, football didn't matter. All that mattered was the life of this young man. And the whole nation was praying. And the good news is, God's answering these prayers. He's off the ventilator. He died twice. They resuscitated him. Even you know, CPR. Pounded. And one guy said, you really couldn't see it because the teams gathered around so quick. So they were pounding that chest. Um, they even had to bring the paddles out. You know, the heart was just quivering. You have to shock it to try to get it back. But then, you know, they said they lost him a second time. I don't know if it was at the hospital or on the way there. In the, in the hospital. In the hospital. Yes. So they get into the hospital. He, he, he dies again. Um, they bring him back again. We didn't know for days. He was on the ventilator. Finally, they said, well, instead of 100% ventilator, it's down to just 50%. He's 50% breathing on his own. Good sign. Good sign. You know, but we didn't know. We didn't know. Praise God. I understand he's off the ventilator completely. That's what I heard. He's alert. He's talking. When Even when he was still on the ventilator, he, he woke up. And they gave him a piece of paper and he wrote, did we win the game? <laughs> so that means his mind's there. Yeah. Right? And the doctor said, yes, you won the game of life. It's changed the mood of the nation. That was just January 2nd. I mean, the first day, so to speak, of the new year in, in, in a week, in a work week sense. And America was suddenly turned into a Christian nation again. Not, not Hindu prayer, not Buddhist prayer, not Muslim prayer, but Christian prayer. The only prayer that is prayer. Yeah. Hallelujah. And then we have the drama 
of the Republicans taking back office. And we got to watch Friday night at the movies. <laughs> got my popcorn. Vote number 8, 10, 12, 14. <laughs> Praise God. President Trump's on the phone. Called him. Right? Yeah. He's calling. Come on, guys. You got to get this done. Right? Yeah. You got all, one guy almost a fist fight breaking out going after Matt Gates, you know. And uh, we're, we got to Congress. We got the Speaker of the House, Kevin McCarthy. <clears throat> right? Uh, and, and some of you may not agree with me on this, but I believe he earned it. He negotiated. He got with the Freedom Caucus. We know some. I know Mike, Cindy, Alice, you got to. I've been down there to the Republican. I was uh, Congressman Paul Gosar. He's one of them. Yeah. Yeah. They won his. Kevin McCarthy won his approval. He started voting for McCarthy. Uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene voted for McCarthy. And so it, was just, it got down to where it was just a couple of them. And uh, finally, they got it done. Uh, I think it was Matt Gates and Lauren Boebert both voted present, which, which brings the number required down. Anyway, Kevin McCarthy went through the hoops, and the changes that have been made are good changes. Yes. So, so the Freedom Caucus holding out, and I am so, I am so mad at Judge Janine. I used to love Judge Judge Janine Pirro. I have lost all respect for that judge because I just this morning I saw I didn't see her do it live, but just this morning they're showing a clip of her saying, "Can't these people just get along?" No, we're not going to go along to get along. We're not a bunch of automaton robot communists like the Democrats. Exactly. No, yeah. That's we're individuals. Talking. That's how it's supposed to work. Anyone that realizes what the Constitution says, it, right. it should be a battle for a Speaker of the House. It should be a battle. Absolutely. There should be debate. There should be compromise. Absolutely. There should be concessions. Absolutely. That's what America is about. That's what, That's what we're not a theocracy. No, we are a theocracy. We should be. Well, I mean, we're not a monarchy. We're not a king running the show. Right? No, it's we the people. And these are the people that we elected. We said we want them to fight. So, of course, the Democrats were bemoaning it and the liberal media, but I was shocked to hear Judge Ginny Pirro say that. And Hannity. He, he you was know, Hannity was not on board with it that much either, was he? No. I'm, I'm disappointed, Sean. I'm disappointed. You know, I'm, uh, uh, I, uh, I, I, I love Dan Bongino. Yeah. You know, yeah. people like that didn't understand. Tucker Carlson. Tucker was a, he understood it. Tucker Carlson, they get it. They get it. No, this is this is what a constitutional republic is about. Right. And because they fought and they took all the way to Friday past midnight on the East Coast, we got some great concessions, some yeah. great rules that are going to help us govern the next couple of years. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So it's an exciting week. It's a great start to the new year. Hallelujah. Yay. Hallelujah. For God. For God in righteousness. Amen. Now come tomorrow morning. Our Republican controlled Congress. And, and, and I love I love that not only does Nancy Pelosi not have the gavel, but crazy Nancy's not even in charge of the minority anymore. Yeah. Although that Hakeem Jeffries is worse. Yes, much worse. He's a worse devil than she. If there could be such a thing. So but that's okay. You know what? They're basically out of power. Okay, we got the majority. Right? As long as we don't get people to, you know, lose their spot. Right? Yeah. We got a slim majority. But but it's a great start. So they can start tomorrow morning, start investigating Joe Biden and, 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 and his associations through his son Hunter with China and Ukraine and Russia and all these other countries. Right? Mm -hmm. They could be, begin releasing the January 6th files. Amen? And find out, well, wait a minute, what are you putting these people in jail for when there were Capitol Police opening the door and waving them in? Aha. Uh Aha. -huh. Uh -huh. Wait a minute. They got up yesterday, on Friday on January 6th, and Joe Biden uh, and all his monkeys got up there and said, we remember the five Capitol Police who gave their life. You lying devil. There wasn't one Capitol Police who gave his life. The only person who died was a veteran by the name of Ashley, help me, what's her name? Babbitt. Babbitt, 14 year military girl, and that Capitol Police would shot her. He needs to be charged with murder. And when I'm president, he's going to be. I'm, 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 I'm not going to run, but I wish I could. 
I her wish I could. Arrested too. I her wish I could. Well, say again. Her mother. Her mother's there Friday to honor her murdered daughter. And they put her in handcuffs. She's jaywalking yet. Come on. This country is corrupt. But I know a God who's holy and who's righteous and who's just and who is a judge. Thank God he's a savior, but he's also a judge. And I believe the judgment of God is about to come down on these people. Amen. Hallelujah. So all that stuff can get released. And we can we can find out why Scottsdale boy right over here, Ray Epps, the only one who's on camera. We have him on camera saying, break the window. Come on, you guys. Do it. No, this is your country. Break in. Break in. Come on. Come on. Egging them on. Egging them on. In fact, he started the day before January 5th rowing the people up. He's the only one we have on video saying break into the Capitol. And he's the only one who hasn't been arrested. Now you tell me what's going on. Because he's undercover FBI. They have emails of him saying that he orchestrated the January 6th riot. And he's still not arrested. What? He's undercover FBI. Oh wait, what does that mean? That means the FBI caused the break in. That means the Democrats orchestrated the break in. So they can release all these files now, starting tomorrow. They can release the January 6th files. They can start doing their investigations. We, we can look into the, 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 the Fauci. Yes, yes. Man, if I was president, he's the first one I'd have arrested and executed. Right. Fauci. We can, we can investigate all these people. Now, as long as Merrick Garland's still there and the Democrats still have the White House, not a whole lot that can be done as far as arresting people. But that's going to change. That's going to change. Now, real quick, because we want to move into our worship and, and prayer and giving in the Word, but just a couple more things I want to say this morning. We're off to a great start. Um, I sent out by email a list of 38 prophecies that a pastor by the name of Chris Reed, in case you're familiar with him, he, uh, there's, a, there's a gentleman that's been in, around for decades now named Rick Joyner. Uh, he is the founder and president of Morningstar Ministries. Rick Joyner was originally part of the Kansas City Prophets, where, where Bob Jones was involved. If you're not familiar with Bob Jones, he's gone home to his reward. <clears throat> but he, he actually died years ago and went to heaven. And, and when he met Jesus, Jesus said, to him, I have one question for you, Bob. Did you learn to love? Did you learn to love? Isn't that the new commandment Jesus gave us? Love one another as I have loved you. But um, these prophecies, um, okay, Bob Jones was a prophet, he came back. Uh, he saw 25 years ago, cell phones. Yeah. He saw an oriental woman with, you know, with the pointed hat in the rice paddy field with something, a device in her hand, rectangular shape with a screen on it. And there was a pastor on that thing preaching the gospel. That's what social media is for. Yeah. That's not for all this other garbage and nonsense that goes on. It's for the gospel to get preached yeah. right into people's palms. Yeah. Yeah. He also foresaw the earthquake and tsunami that hit Japan. 50,000 people died. Remember the tsunami swept in? Yeah. They never found most of those 50,000. They just get swept out in the sea. And it took like 20 years for that prophecy to be fulfilled. And every time Japan, because Japan has earthquakes oftentimes. But they were, this was a massive one. Remember the two nuclear plants literally melted down because of it. It was such a massive earthquake. And every time Japan would have an earthquake, they'd say, Bob, is that the one? He goes, no, that's not it. It's not big enough. It's not big enough. Now, you know, five, two years later, five years later, is that the one? No, no. Then when this one hit, he goes, that's it. That's the one. But here's the thing about his prophecy. His prophecy is that that Japan earthquake would be followed by a similar one of similar intensity in California. It hasn't come yet. It's California, repent. Give your hearts to Jesus. Anyway, Rick Jordan became the leader of that ministry, moved to South Carolina, near Moravian Falls, South Carolina. Morning Star Ministries. He's getting older now. They have a church there. The pastor is Chris Reed. And Chris Reed is actually uh, in training, so to speak, so that when Rick Joyner retires, 
He'll just take over the whole Morning Star ministry thing. It's a very prophetic ministry. Uh, it's a ministry that believes in the gift of prophecy and, and seeking God for, for what God's up to and what's going to happen in the world. And he came up with 38 things that he believes God has shown him are going to happen this year or within two years or three years. Funny is two of them, I agree with many of them. I agree with most of them. In fact, one of them is Israel's going to have to attack Iran to take out one of their nuclear facilities. Duh. <laughs> I mean, you don't need a prophet to know, be a prophet to know that. Yeah. Because Benjamin Netanyahu's back in the house. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And because Barack Hussein, the Muslim terrorist Obama, yeah. sent $150 billion to the mullahs in Iran on a pallet under the cover of night in cash and gold yeah. to get the release of one hostage. Oh, wait, we're supposed to have a policy where we don't pay for hostages to get released. Because that just encourages more hostages to be taken. Oh, but Obama did it, right? Yeah. Never admitted to it. Never admitted to it, right? But he then puts them on a rock, on a plan within 10 years to have the nuclear bomb and to wipe Israel from the face of the earth. Well, if you know your Bible, you know Israel's not going to be wiped off the face of the earth. In fact, anybody who tries, God will wipe you off the face of the earth. Yeah. Can I get an amen? amen. So... Eight years of Obama, eight worst years in American history. Then we get Donald John Trump. Praise God. Answer to our prayers. And Trump stopped it. He stopped the influence that the money was going to Iran. He shut Iran down. Told him, you guys better straighten up. Or we'll, we'll start singing bomb, 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 Iran, bomb. Anyway. <laughs> Beach Boys. Anyway. Um, but then they run. Donald Trump out of town. Try impeaching him twice. Reagan steal the 2020 election. And now Obama's back in control through his puppet, Biden. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because Obama has put his head girl, Susan Rice, in charge of Washington, D.C. It's called the Policy Committee. The Policy Committee determines all the policies. Yeah. So Obama's running the show. Biden's just a puppet. Yeah. And, but, we got the House back. Hallelujah. Things are turning. Things are turning. Things are turning. Right? So yeah, Benjamin Netanyahu is going to have to bomb her on to stop them from getting the nuke. He's not going to allow that to happen. God has put him there if for no other reason. Well, two reasons God's put him there. Not to give up any more land. Not to, not to be pressured by the United States or any other entity to give up land for peace. That is against God. And he already got ejected out of the prime minister one time before because he did that. He gave up land for peace and God kicked him out. And sent a Christian prophet to him out of Africa. To tell him, thus says the Lord, you've been, you will be ejected if you give up land for, to try to make a peace deal by pressure by the United States or anybody else. God will rip you out of your prime ministership. Boom, it happened. The prophet came back to him and said, now God will restore you, but don't you ever give up land again. So he's learned his lesson. The second reason is to stop Iran or anybody else that wants to wipe out Israel. So yeah, I, 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 see, I can see that. But there were two, there were two that I actually said these last Sunday. I don't know if you caught it or not. But last Sunday, there were two things on that list of 38 <laughs> that I actually said, just not playing that part of a sermon, I think just, just conversation like we're having now. And it was, we were talking about something, and I was, it's a new year, and I said, man, we're, it's going to be a great year. And, and somebody said, yeah, well, we still got Biden. No. And I said, not for long. I said, because we're going to have Kamala soon. That's one of his prophecies. Now, he doesn't say Biden's going to die, and I'm not saying he's going to die. But I'm saying he, I don't believe he's going to be president until the end of his term. No. And Kamala would become president. I, and I said that last Sunday. Does anybody remember me saying that last Sunday? Yeah. Now, time will tell, but he says the same thing. He says the same thing. Uh, if, if I remember as I read it, I read through it kind of quickly. I think that he thinks it's going to be these investigations. They're going to turn up the corruption of Biden with all this money through his son in China and all, all this influence that he'll, he'll get impeached or he'll just be forced to resign. And in an attempt to try to salvage his presidency, because it's going to be it's going to be headlines, you know, Biden corruption, Biden family corruption. And, and they should all go to jail, and I hope they all do, right? But it'll be so bad he'll either resign or get impeached. 
and and uh, at that point to try to salvage the way Chris Reed is saying it, try to salvage some semblance of his presidency for the left wing liberals by resigning, Kamala becomes president. But for a short time. But for a short time. So you did you read the prophecies? Yes. But for a short time. I believe you that. Need so a measure of faith if some of those come true. Don't you? Yes. Yeah. You are. And, and, and here's the thing about prophecy, I'm glad you said that, Debbie. If there's something that you agree with and you think that's a good thing, pray into that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't be a doubter. Be a believer and say, okay, God, I'm going to test it. Because what do we do with prophecy? What's 1 Thessalonians, uh, 5, 1 Thessalonians 5, uh, 19 and 20 say? It, it, it says, maybe it's 18 and 19. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesying, yeah. prove all things. Yeah. Hold fast that which is good. Yeah. So don't quench your spirit. Don't despise prophecy. Don't say, hey, yeah, wait, now I did. No. It, love it. Embrace it. But prove all things. That means test them. Test them. Right? But hold on to that which is good. So so pray into it. You know, if you say, wow, man, I hope that does happen. I mean, to be honest, I'd rather have Kamala than, than Joe. Uh, because I don't know that Kamala is as bought and tied in with Obama. I could see, you, you know, women are different. And women don't always like a man trying to tell them what to do. No. Really? Oh. <laughs> How many times have you been married? Now, the Bible does say, wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as unto the Lord. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. Uh, but um, why is this back? I'll just get up here. Yes, sir. If, if uh, Kamala's uh, time as president is really short, then that means Kevin McCarthy could end up being. No, because no. they'll, put, they'll put Gavin Newsom in as vice president. Then they'll get rid of her, and Newsom will be president. No, she'll, she'll become president. Oh, God. Right. But then they have, they're going to put a, a VP, and that'll be Gavin Newsom. Oh, a VP. Yeah, oh, like, who, who, who cares? VP is just a figurehead at that point. Then they'll get rid of her. No, who, who? Who will get rid of her? Oh, the Democrats don't want to run her in 24. They oh, 2024, we're taking the House back. White they, House. I hope so, but they, because they don't oh, want we, to run her. They know she's a loser. No, no, she, in, in fact, one of the prophecies is uh, either Biden or her will be on the 2024 Democrat ticket. Yeah, I believe that. It'll probably be Newsom. Yep. Somebody like that. He doesn't stand a chance. He's a communist liar. But you see what he's trying to do, though? One million dollars to every black person. In California for reparations for slavery. Okay, now see what he's doing. He's doing it in California so that when he runs for president, he'll make a promise to every black person in America I'll give you one million dollars if you'll elect me president, you lying devil. First of all, it's illegal, they can't do it, it's all talk. They can't do it. First of all, 90% of black people aren't descended from slaves in America. You know, but regardless, we don't owe you nothing. I did nothing to you, okay? I'm not going to pay you reparations for something that happened 150 years ago. First of all, I'm a Republican. And the Republicans fought the Civil War against the Democrats and defeated the Democrats to free you from slavery. You owe me reparations. All the black people that are free now owe me as a Republican some reparations for getting your ass out of chains. Oh, I just said, <laughs> No, forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, church. Forgive me. Forgive me. I usually say donkey. Oh, okay. How about backside? That's good. I'm, no, seriously, I am sorry. I don't like to do that. Yeah, but it works. I think you use the A word. Yeah, I don't think that's a bad word. Okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> you got a pass. I got a pass. I'll let you. you guys are the best congregation in the world. Let me tell you. You know why? Because you're real. You're not. You're not fake stuffy, right? No, nobody likes uh, a Pharisee, right? But um, praise God. So, so in interesting. So I said that. I said, oh yeah, you know, Biden's going to be gone. We're going to have Kamala. Time will tell. We'll see. We'll see. Here, here, here's the other one. If you remember last week, something came up about China, and I just began. And again, none of this was planned last week. I just began to pray, guys. If Xi Jinping. You have been t tearing down the churches of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's been bulldozing Christian churches in China. You know, the, the church finally was able to come up out from being underground, right? And they actually were building churches. And uh, some pretty good sized ones, nice ones. He started taking bulldozers 
Because there were pastors that would stand, he, he'd send them a sermon. Here's your sermon this week. It's to exalt me as the chairman, you know, Xi Jinping. And they said, no, I'm not preaching that. I'm preaching about Jesus. He goes, okay, you sure? Yeah, Bam, here comes a bulldozer. Yeah. Bulldozed? I mean, churches that took a lot of money to build the people, right? I said, you've destroyed the Lord's church. The Lord is about to destroy you, Xi Jinping. And I said, Xi Jinping will be removed from power. This guy says the same thing. Now, he thinks this might take as much as 10 years to happen. But it's starting now. It's start, the rebellion against him is starting now. And the people are already rebelling in the streets of China, which is never heard of, because he had them all locked down for the COVID thing, right? Yep. And, and people, the, the apartment building would catch on fire, and the people would all die because they were locked in their houses. The military would come in and seal the door from the outside. And people were right there, fed up in China. It's very interesting. Interesting. Two things we said last week are in those 38. So read through them. They're interesting. Time will tell, right? There's some good stuff in there, though. Right? There's some good stuff. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, but praise God. But no, I'm, 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 I'm believing uh, the tide's turning. Uh, even though we've been so disappointed, time, election after election after election, we've got the house, guys. Let's rejoice in that. And let's be excited and believe and pray for 2024. I'm still hoping for the Trump DeSantis ticket. I know they're going to butt heads. In fact, one of the prophecies is they're going to go head to head in the Republican primary. And it's going to get nasty. Okay. Um, politics are nasty. But you know what politicians do is they go and then when it's all done, they embrace and they hug and, you know. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, who knows? But I'm, I'm believing it's a righteous Republican who's got common sense in the White House in 2024. Amen. Right? Praise God.